How's it going, folks? Um, I decided to make a video and re release it today. This is going to be um, an extra that I'm uh, releasing. Um, and this has to do with uh, a bit of news. Uh, dinosaurs in the news, actually. So, for many years now, there's been a uh, T-Rex on display at the Black Hills Institute. Um, they state that it is one of the third most complete skeletons of a T-Rex. Uh, its name is well, it's called Stan. Um, it was um, roughly, it's roughly 37 feet long. Um, and it's only one of 50 uh, discovered specimens that can be linked as specimens and not single teeth or bone. Um, again, this was uh, on display at the Black Hills Institute. It was named after an amateur paleontologist that had found the skeleton. Um, so, this has caused some debate. Um, it is estimated to sell between six to eight million dollars at the Christie's auction house in New York. It's a lot of money. Um, the last T-Rex to sell was Sue, which is the largest and the most complete T-Rex. And um, she had sold for um, 8.36 million dollars. Um, and that was quite a few years ago. That's 20 years ago or thereabout. Maybe a little over. Um, so it was, was sold because of a lawsuit. Um, I've tried to figure out why the Black Hills Institute is selling this because they are the ones from what I've seen that has this up for auction. Um, I hadn't seen anything conclusive myself. I saw mentioned that there may have been a lawsuit on this one as well, but I'm not for sure. Um, generally speaking, um, I know the Black Hills Institute is quite famous. I've not looked into them uh, a whole lot as far as uh, as a uh, institution is concerned. Um, I'm not for sure if they are classed as a non-profit natural history museum uh chances are they may be but i'm not i'm not for sure um the um sue was bought by the chicago field museum and is on display there uh it's going to be interesting and to see who uh who ends up with stan uh there is a lot of copies of Stan's of the skeleton um, he is one of the I say he I'm, I've not looked into its gender sex um, I do know that Sue was a female and there were a few others that were uh, discovered to be female but I've not researched Stan a lot I, I say he because of the, the name although it was named because of the the person who found it, the same as Sue. Um, the Society of Vertebrate pa Paleontology in Virginia, or located in Virginia, uh, sent a letter to the auction house asking them to restrict the bidders to only um, institutions, um, scientific institutions that would curate the fossil uh, and uh, to further public knowledge. Um, there have been a couple other high priced or high, yeah, high priced auctions that's come up uh, in regards in 2018. There was a uh, Allosaurus uh, that sold for that auction. Uh, that one was a mystery, uh, somewhat. Uh, there was a possibility it was a new species and it went to a private collector. 
Um, that being said, this is uh, I'm going to talk about the controversy of uh, fossil collecting. Being a collector myself, uh, both through uh, amateur uh, fossil hunting as well as uh, purchasing a few fossils. Um, so this is a uh, fossil belief that I have found myself. Uh, this is the tooth of a theropod from Morocco. Uh, I'm not sure the species on that one. Anyway, so I do have a lot of fossils, as you may have guessed. Uh, um, that being said, none of my fossils have been illegally obtained, and they are not any scientific importance behind them. Um, as for the teeth that I own, uh, as for uh, concerning dinosaurs, that includes um, two dromaeosaur, three dromaeosaurus teeth, um, I did Montosaurus tooth, Spinosaurus tooth. Uh, this could be Delta Dromaeus, but most likely it is a, uh, uh, the name forgets, uh, leaves me. But anyway, this tooth. Um, and then the ones that I've collected have been either Pennsylvanian age fossils or um, Mississippian, which are uh, Pennsylvanian is upper carboniferous, Mississippian is lower carboniferous based on the age. So Pennsylvanian is the youngest of the two ages, so it's upper in the geologic. If you looked at a scale as humans being at the top, on the modern time, and then going down into the rock, the, um, the deeper you go, the older they get. Uh, so you have, uh, let's take the Mesozoic, uh, let's just take the Cretaceous. You have the upper Cretaceous, which is the youngest, the middle, and then the lower Cretaceous, which is the oldest. Those are actually broken down a lot more complicated than that, but that's what they call them. Anyway. With me being a collector, uh, I'm mixed. For one thing, Stan has been, I would like to see Stan in a museum or another institution. Uh, we need educational resources in school. Maybe not a skeleton of a dinosaur, but, but, um, Schools across the country, not just in science, but in other uh, areas of academia, need resources. And it is somewhat of a shame that this beautiful specimen may go into a private collector and be shut away. With that being said, again, Stan is extremely copied uh, through CAST. It has been studied for couple decades, two or three decades, um, and it is, I mean, it's, it's to the point to where it is, wouldn't be as bad of a loss for Stan to go into a private collection as it did the Allosaurus, which had not been studied. Um, The, um, there's a lot of people talk about the amateur fossil trade and the am amateur fossil hunters in general. Um, the thing about it is, um, most, I don't want to say most, a big portion of the important finds that have happened have been, have been found by amateurs. Um, it's just. There's not enough, one, there's not enough scientists. Um, the paleontology field has diminished greatly because of funding cuts. Um, so the scientists are, that are there that work at institutions and universities, the universities and institutions at times find it hard to fund digs. A lot of the digs are either done on public land or private land that is they have permission to hunt on 
private land owners in the case of sue between the landowner and the institute which i'm not if i'm not mistaken with the black hills institute as well but i'm not 100 percent sure on that one anyway um so between the institute the landowner and then the reservation that it was actually found on um there was a big court battle there's just not enough scientists and trained people uh trained as in trained at a university there's just not enough people to excavate the dinosaurs and to say that you're just going to leave them there doesn't necessarily work because fossils are delicate and they get eroded really easily um so something that may be there this year will not be there next year um so amateurs have played a big part in finding fossils in finding major finds sue being one of them uh stan being another so there's just it's not a cut and dry situation unfortunately uh another thing that plays a factor is most museums are nonprofit organizations who receive very little funding from the government itself and is mostly funded by private donations. During this pandemic, there have, there is estimated um, there's a very high number of museums estimated to be closing for good. Uh, not just paleontology museums, but uh, or geological institutes, but um, a number of others. Uh, anything that is a non-profit organization um, gets hurt in these situations. When it comes to museums, art museums are always the better funded. There's always more donors going towards art museums than they are natural history museums. It's just it's how things work. Um, I don't want to get too political, but or too cynical but people of certain wealth like to be seen in certain venues and art venues is one of those so you'll have um, a lot of people buying art um, a lot of rich people more rich people buying art than you would fossils that being said with something like stan it is estimated that there will be some people who come out and uh who are not solely interested in the in dinosaurs but just will bid because they want to own a t-rex or yeah, what's left of one anyway uh there's just so much to go over i could <laughs> um there again it's not a cut and dry situation it'll never be a cut and dry situation um, museums are cram packed with specimens that are still waiting to be studied. Museums are vaults full of specimens. And when an institution like the Black Hills, and this is just theoretical, I do not know, <coughs> excuse me, I do not know if this is the case, so do not think that I. But something like the Black Hills Institute or any of the other or any smaller museum who has a specimen that is worth loads of money and has been studied extensively is going to be willing to more willing to give up that specimen that has been studied extensively and worth loads of money to save their institution. It's just unfortunately that's how things go. Whether this is what's happened or not, I don't know. I've heard that the person who that someone who owned it that said it was time to go time for someone else to enjoy it um i've also heard that 
the person that buys the skeleton does not buy the actual casting rights. So whoever owns the casting rights with, uh, whether it be the Black Hills Institute or whatever, can sell cast of the skeletons and stand from here on out. It's just the specimen itself going to the collector, which is big enough. Um... I mean, I have shown my some of my casts, whether it be the Allosaurus Claw or the T-Rex 2. Uh, and one of my future videos is going to be a Velociraptor Claw. And hopefully that same video, because I will be going over Dromaeosaurs, will be um, a replica of a Velociraptor Skull. Um, unfortunately... There's no easy solution to this. Um, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology is right in wanting their wanting something like this to be in public. It is something to see a T Rex specimen in person is an awe inspiring thing. Any, any of the large dinosaurs. Um, Unfortunately, I've only been to uh, a couple museums with specimens. Uh, one of them was at the Smithsonian. Unfortunately, at that time, the Smithsonian was under, the uh, Fossil Hall was under reconstruction, and they only had two uh, large specimens, uh, a Tyrannosaurus and a Triceratops. Um, there's a small section for uh, geology in the Frank H. McClung Museum in Knoxville. Uh, I do plan on going there when the pandemic is over. Hopefully, they would and want to see if they'll let me film. Uh, there's a Mosasaur skeleton there. Uh, I do want to go to Atlanta and Cincinnati and several other museums, hopefully in the near future, or at least not too distant future. Um, I would love to own a museum myself. I would love to own a, you know, if I, if I had the ability to start a museum, I would definitely, and you know, if I had the money and the means and the location to do it, yes, I would be more than willing to bid on Stan, uh, and put him on public display again. But, that's not going to happen. Anyway, uh, this was extremely rambly, and I do apologize. Um, I did have a little note, but I just wanted to make kind of an impromptu thing. Uh, if you are interested in fossil collections, um, or collecting fossils, there is fossilera.com. Uh, stupid camera reversed that on me. Anyway, hopefully you can figure it out. Uh, there is a, uh, a gentleman called Paleo Joe. He sells fossils. Uh, some really good specimens. Uh, he is on Facebook. You can find him on Facebook. I highly suggest looking him up. I think he may be on YouTube sometimes too. I'll have to check into that. Uh, but that's all I have. Have a great evening. God bless. Goodbye.